Hello, everybody. Warm welcome here to the Wine with Jimmy channel. I'm your host, Jimmy Smith. This is a wine educational channel, really, for those of you just wanting to learn more, specifically for those of you studying topics like we have here, the WSET Level 3 course. This is the much anticipated Greek video. So Greece is going to be split into two parts. We'll cover everything you need to know for the level three syllabus in this video. And then we'll go through some short written questions in part two. OK, so please do get in touch also by commenting below this video. If you have a question, if you have a comment, you want to get in touch about your experiences with Greek wines, please do communicate and make sure you click subscribe and like as well. Now, Greece's most interesting wines arguably will come from the country's plethora of indigenous or autochthonous native grape varieties. Now, remembering that ancient Greek cities have a lot of history predating the Romans, uh, and with the connection towards the Eastern Mediterranean, there's a hell of a lot of history behind the viticulture and winemaking across the Greek islands. Now, these grapes we find here, these specific native grapes, we call them, thrive, most of them, in hot, arid conditions. And they provide the country of Greece with a unique selling point on export markets. Now, we're going to focus on three grape varieties from three main areas of Greece production. So we're going to look at Genomadro, uh, which is from Naosa, Agiopitiko from Nemea, and Assertico from Santorini. They're the three grapes. And you'll, you'll notice here that the Chinamadro grape variety, which comes from Nemea, is up here in this red area highlighted, the Macedonian area. Agiorgatiko, another red grape variety, comes down here in Nemea on the Peloponnese Peninsula. And then this island down here, uh, the island of Santorini, the volcanic island of Solterini, Santorini, very important for the Assertico grape variety. So they're the three bits that we will focus on for the most part. So <clears throat> we can broadly say that Greece has a Mediterranean climate and in terms of warmth, it is actually quite hot. In summer, there are regular achievements of temperature above 30 degrees Celsius, but we do have a remarkable amount of coastline with Greece. Uh, with large places like the Peloponnese and all of the islands. So we'll have a moderating effect from the sea, certainly when we look towards the westerly points. Uh, but also there is um, the influence of altitude and also certain wind patterns as well. Certainly you'll find in the islands to the southeast of the mainland, there is actually wind here, which is strong enough to destroy unprotected vineyards. Um, but of course, when it's a little bit more uh, moderate, you'll find that that wind can cause cooling conditions, just like altitude can as well. So most of the best vineyards are to be found on these cooler sites, away from, of course, the classic blistering heat commonly associated, of course, with Greece. There's a reason why many of us take to our holiday travels off to one of the lovely Greek islands, because, of course, it's normally drenched in sunshine and it's very, very warm. Um, so what about viticultural conditions here? So rainfall levels can actually vary quite considerably. But even in the wetter areas, which tend to be in the west of the country, the almost complete lack of rain in the growing season can cause significant hydric stress to the vines. So drought is a particular concern on the eastern side of Greece, which lies in the rain shadow 
of the mountains. So you'll therefore have little access to irrigation, rain shadow effect, and of course, drought conditions in place in those zones. Now, there are over 200 grape varieties native to Greece, so it's rather complex. Uh, very few of these are grown outside of Greece uh, as a total. Uh, and these varieties, as I mentioned before, have adapted very well to survive in these arid, hot conditions. And they can craft very, very high quality wine from these quite disparate conditions. There are plantings of black and white international grape varieties, typically things like Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, Cabernet, Merlot um, and so on. Uh, but most of our PDO wines, protected designation of origin wines, will typically use um, wholly native varieties or a large percentage of. So let's go through our key grape varieties and regions. Um, we're just going to touch on the wine laws to begin with. So the wine laws of Greece follow that of other EU countries with the wines classed, of course, as PDO. And you'll see that actually here, written and in Greek and also in English, protected designation of or origin, Nausa. Um, also below that, you have the typical protected ge geographical indication, which is PGI. Now for export markets, producers of dry PDO wines may either use the term PDO, as you see on the label, or less frequently, Appellation d'Origine de Qualité Supérieure, which is a subcategory within the PDO classification. On the domestic market, the Greek equivalent is uh, typically used, written in Greek, as you'll see there, um, and you'll find the exact word in, in your textbooks. Okay, let's take a look at the three most important PDOs that we find within Greece. So first of all, we're going to start in the north of the country in Macedonia. We have a map which has been uh, transplanted on a lovely picture here. Uh, and you'll see that we have highlighted where this Nausa area is, as you can see, kind of in the uh, central western part of Macedonia. So um, the vineyards here are at altitudes typically up to about 400 meters and they are noticeably cooler than the surrounding area that we find in Macedonia. The picture you see here is actually the Kyrgyani winery in Nausa. Key grape variety is the famous Chinamavro. So um, the PDO wines here for Nausa, the reds, are made exclusively from Chinamavro. It's a variety which is nearly always compared or aligned with Nebbiolo, which is found from Piemonte and Lombardia in northern northwest Italy. So why? Well, it has certainly high levels of tannin, high levels of acidity. And then traditionally, we have this color, which is either pale or medium tawny. So they're wines that oxidize really quickly in terms of their color stabilization. They also tend to lack fresh fruit even in their youth. So these are wines typically that are more based on dried red fruit, dried cherries, dried red currants, dried cranberries, for example. As with Nebbiolo, which it's aligned with commonly, these wines are long lived and can develop complex earth spice, uh, meaty mushroom aromas. And that's what you've got here in this picture. It's also said to be fairly sort of olivey in style, this wine. Now, some wines that are made from Chinamavro are more deeply colored and less tannic, and some are also aged in new oak. So really exciting. Um, they are making some beautifully bright expressions actually today from younger vines as well. So do look out for those, very affordable and very complex expressions. 
So now we are coming down to Nemea. Now, Nemea is in the north part of the Peloponnese Peninsula. We have actually pinpointed it here on this map. Now, the Peloponnese is a large island. Uh, it's called the Peloponnese Peninsula. And we are sitting in that kind of north and northeastern section. It's very close to the narrow strip of land that joins the peninsula to the rest of mainland Greece. The vineyards are spread out over quite a variable amount of altitude from around 230 to 900 meters. Now, as with very sort of classic way of talking about aspect and slope, typically the best vineyards are those in the middle because they have a good balance. And that is the case here as well. So the kind of medium altitudes here at about 400 and 500 tend to produce the best quality fruit. Now, if you go to the lower slopes, so we reduce our altitude towards sort of two to 300, this will be hotter. And typically the wines can be overly jammy and the wines are made more often into fruity fruit bomb wines, which are for early consumption. And then conversely, fruit from the very highest echelon, sort of 800, 900 meters, will have higher acidity, less finer tannins, and it can add freshness to a red blend if you're sourcing from multiple altitudes. Uh, and it's well known for pink production as well. Um, so what kind of a style do we expect then? Well, the grape variety at play here is Agiogatico. So the PDO is exclusively for this grape variety. So we are looking at deep ruby color, high level of soft, smooth tannins, low to moderate acidity with sweet spice and red fruit. That's what you find here, right? So you've got red fruit, clovey, white pepper characteristics, and typically quite floral as well, these wines. The wines have a really good affinity with new oak, and they can age quite well as well. And our last area is the island, the volcanic island in the agency, which is the Santorini Island. Now, the winds are so strong here that a rather unique training method has been adopted to protect the vines. It's like a, a crown of thorns. It's a basket that is weaved together, as you can see here. The leaf foliage kind of dominates the top, or like it would do like a crown of thorns. But the grapes sit on the inside, shaded and also protected from the very intense wind. So there's more stabilization in terms of flowering, and then of course going through ripening as well. So they sit in the inside of that basket. Uh, so quite amazing, quite genius. Now, this landscape is very, very disparate. You'll find very low nutrients, very poor soils here, volcanic, and of course the yields are dramatically low from this wine style. So the PDO covers red and white wines made in dry and sweet examples, but really is the white production which is the most famous. The white production is certainly the one that really gets plaudits and lots of very positive uh, acclaim around the world. The dry wines from Assertico tend to have these perfumed aromas and concentrated ripe citrus stone fruit and then really good high sort of minerality through its acidity. They are quite expressive wines. They're rather wonderful. Typically quite high in alcohol, also quite full in body as well. There's an also another expression here. So there is a sweet wine from the island called Van Santo. There you go, you see the picture of it on the right. Late harvested grapes are sun dried for about 14 days, a couple of weeks. You'll see them actually doing this process in that picture. The wines are then aged in old oak barrels for a minimum of two years. Uh, with many aging it for much longer. The luscious sweetness is balanced by high acidities, and the older wines typically have kind of like an oxidized caramel and nutty toffee-like characteristic to them. They are quite wonderful.
Okay, so that brings me to a conclusion for this first part on Greece, which is covering everything you need to know. Please do join me for part two, which is looking at a short written answer question. Uh, if you do have any comments or questions of your own, please do get in touch by commenting below. And if you want to, of course, see this short written question, you will need to sign up to my portal that's found at the bottom of the slide, winewithjimmy.com. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Goodbye.